Hello again, watch friends. Welcome back. Today, I'd like to deviate from my usual topic and talk about cars. Not just any cars, but a particular brand. BMW. Bereske Modern Werk. Frequently translated to Bavarian Motor Works. Now, I've been a BMW guy for many decades. Since 1974, in fact when I had a 1967 1600. It was my first Beamer. Nota bene. Beamers are BMW motorcycles. Beamers are cars. The 1967-1600 was my first Beamer and was a simple two-door manual transmission car with, get this, a six-volt battery. It wasn't until 1968 that BM started using 12-volt batteries. The 1600 was a precursor to the famed 2002 that pretty much made BMW successful in the U.S. especially, but throughout the world. The 1600 begat the 1800, which begat the 2000, and then finally the 2002. Today's BMW 3 Series is the latest progeny of those cars. That 1600 was an extremely fun car to drive. It was billed as a sports sedan, although it had only two doors. To this day, BMW is still somewhat category challenged when naming its lineup of cars. Back then, in the early 1970s, there were so few BMWs on the road that whenever you saw another one, you flashed your headlights to say hello. Also interestingly, the turn signal stock on that car was on the right side of the steering column. And one other fun fact was that the ignition switch had the word F-A-H-R-T, fart, which was the verb uh, in German to drive. So you would stick your key in the ignition switch, turn the key to fart, and that would start the engine. I can't tell you how much fun I had amazing my friends with that nomenclature on the ignition switch. Remember, I was a young guy back then. Anyway, so I recently transitioned. I won't mention all the BMWs I had between 1974 and... Uh, throughout several decades, but I recently transitioned from a 2006 3 Series wagon to a 2018 3 Series wagon. I've always been a, a wagon guy. Check out this 1984 Honda Civic wagon in that beautiful brown color. Anyway, I've always been a wagon guy, and I had planned to keep the 06 for many more years until I found out that BMW was going to no longer importing the 3 Series wagon to the United States. Sales were just too low to justify getting the car certified by the feds. Most U.S. car buyers want SUVs, or in BMW's terminology, SAV, Sports Activity Vehicle. Uh, wagons are so passe. Anyway, my manual transmission, 2006 E91, the code name for the, that version of the car, is now history, having moved on to another BMW enthusiast. I'll miss it. The new 2018 F31, its designation, has arrived, and there are some subtle and more obvious differences. I'd like to highlight them here. I'd be interested in your thoughts on these differences, whether or not you're a BMW owner, and whether or not you agree with my comments. So, there are some things I, I like, that I still like, about the 2018 3 Series uh, wagon. One thing is, the oil level is measured uh, through a control on the uh, instrument panel. 
There's no dipstick in the car. I remember back in the early 2000s uh, being at a meeting of the BMW Car Club of America, which I belong to, and I belong to the New Jersey chapter. Uh, I remember being at a meeting at BMW of America's uh, headquarters in Mont Montvale, New Jersey, uh, and listening to the uh, head of product strategy from BMW talking about the lack of a dipstick in their new car. There was quite the commotion. People were upset. You know, actually, it's it's easier. It's more accurate, as that fellow said back then. And it's really, really not a big deal at all. So, measuring the oil level once the car warms up, done through the to the dashboard is a lot easier and not as dirty as actually pulling out a dipstick. Another thing I like about BMWs, and this has been true uh, for the last at least 15 years, is that it has the ability to lock the car with any door or hatch open except the driver's door. In other words, if the if one of the passenger doors is open and you close the driver's door, you can lock the vehicle with the other door still open, remove what you need to get out of the car, and then close the door and it's locked. You don't have to wait for all the doors to be closed before you lock the car. That's a really handy feature. I also like the non-ostentatious dashboard the cabin. That's pretty much a um, a trait of BMWs, at least in the 3 Series. Some people might call that austere. Uh, I think it's fine. It's I like the minimal approach. And I also like the quality of the BMW. For example, my wife has a, a Jaguar XE. And one day, I happened to notice the rear taillight of her Jaguar. Uh, see the picture above? And I noticed that the taillight, which spanned both the left side of the car, the fender, and the trunk, was misaligned. Just by a little bit, but enough to be noticed. And it wasn't a case of where the trunk wasn't completely seated. It looked like it was designed that way. Now look at the BMW. Look at that taillight. And you see that is perfectly aligned. So that's just one little example of one of the things I like about BMW. Now, what's different? Well, for example, the roof rack. On my 2006 station wagon, the roof rack was actually elevated and on little stands. So if you wanted to attach something to the roof rack, like I did uh, about a year ago when I bought a new screen door, put it on top of the car, lashed it to the roof rack, and drove it home from the local Home Depot, I can't do that now because now the roof rack is integral to the roof. There's no space to tie a rope underneath it. The cruise control. On the older car, there was a separate stock on the left side of the steering column below the turn signal that controlled the cruise control. Not easy to say. You would, you would uh, lift it up to turn it on, push it down to turn it off, push it forward to increase your speed, pull it back to decrease. Very simple, very elegant, straightforward. Now the cruise control is on the steering wheel, which I think most cars have. At first I thought this was a big deal, but I've gotten used to in the last month of having it on a steering wheel. The new car does not have a manual transmission. Uh, BMW apparently sells about 1% of their cars as station wagons. And previously, when, when standard transmissions were available, 1% of the 1% had manual transmissions. So, and the U.S. government apparently requires certification for each variant of each car. So, uh, it just didn't make sense for BMW to continue with a manual. And as it turns out, as most car enthusiasts know, um, 
the eight-speed automatic transmission in the BMW is actually faster uh, zero to sixty uh, time than you could shift the manual transmission yourself. So, and plus you can uh, you can always uh, put the automatic transmission in sport mode where it holds the gears longer, and you can actually shift it yourself, uh, shift the gears uh, yourself. The next thing is the inability to see the odometer, trip odometer, and average mile per hour or average mile per gallon all at once. In the old car, uh, these were separate displays, and at the bottom of the of the uh, dashboard, you would you could decide whether you wanted to display either your average mile per hour, your average miles per gallon, or your distance to empty tank. Uh, now you have to, you can't, there's no way to see the regular odometer and a trip odometer as well as one of these other items. So you have to cycle these with a button on the turn signal stock. Just uh, a little bit inconvenient. Uh, the clock and temperature are always there displayed uh, separately, but not these things. And the uh, second to last item is the, uh, there's no audio input jack. Uh, the older car, uh, I was able to take an old uh, iPod and play it through the audio system by plugging it into an audio input jack. Now it's used USB only. Uh, of course, it has Bluetooth, uh, but no, no input jack. And finally, uh, unfortunately, it's the same. The seat and mirror memory settings location, uh, both on my older car that was 12 years old, and my new car, the seat memory buttons are at the bottom of the driver's seat. And there's no way you can see them while you're sitting in the car. You look down and they're, they're hidden by the seat. You have to actually open the door and see what you're doing. Uh, it's almost impossible to use while seated in the driver's seat. Most other cars have the control on the armrest where it's easy to see and use. And here's a picture, for example, of my wife's uh, Jag. So, there are some new things I like. Uh, miles to empty is always displayed. That's handy. The LED headlights are excellent. Probably the best I've used on any BMW or other cars. Whether it's Jaguar, Acura, or previous BMWs. Excellent headlights. Highly recommend the LED headlights. Comfort access. This is BMW's name for hands-free door and hatch opening. Uh, I especially like waving the, my foot under the rear car to open the tailgate. Many cars have had this, uh, but this is the first time for me. It's very helpful when you have your hands full of packages or other items. I kind of poo-pooed the idea of hands-free door unlocking, but even that's very handy. You just touch the handle. As long as the key fobs in your pocket, you touch the door handle and it unlocks the car. And then when you're leaving, you put your thumb on another portion of the door handle and that locks everything. Very nice. And the iDrive settings, this is BMW's method of customizing various settings. Uh, the iDrive settings are now categorized, which makes them a little bit easier to find uh, what you're looking for. So those are a few of my favorite and not so favorite things. The BMW 3 Series model is about to be revved for the 2019 model year. Though there won't be a wagon coming to the U.S., uh, Europeans still love them over SUVs, and BMW still sells wagons there. Hopefully we'll see some improvements in maybe some of these or other areas. So those are the BMW changes. Just thought I'd share that. I really enjoy driving the 2018 3 Series wagon. I'm not an SUV or SAV fan. I like the wagon. Uh, and um, that's that. It's clear I'm a BMW guy, and I still am a BMW guy, even after more than 40 years.
Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.